Ellie. Hi, Sherry. So I don't know if you remember, we actually had the chance to meet back in 2020 um, at IBS. So in um, oh, IBS, IBS 2020, yeah, yeah. We were doing the residential road show. So it's great to see you again. I know it's been a couple of years since then, but yeah. I, I miss being able to, uh, you know, first of all, travel that freely and see that many people without a mask and be that social. But I know that was right before everything happened. So little did we mm-hmm. know it was coming. <laughs> I know. Right. But hopefully next year, actually, IBS just happened. What? Jan- January last month. Yeah. So we were able to see um, Mike. So he came by the booth again um, and we were able to get a quick video for the ECCN program, which is okay. what I, I guess oh. backwards. more <laughs> specifically. It's reversed. <laughs> I know. I do that all the time. I feel that. So how are you? I'm good. So um, it's been, you know, I live a fully remote life now. Um, so I've been mm-hmm. trying to work up my uh, at home office here, but it's been good. Um, and actually, you know, perfect timing with this event. Um, I know we've got, you know, R- Ramash has been speaking about women in construction coming up in March. It's actually been in my personal development goals to get more involved with the initiatives that we've got on Eaton's end of things, um, just helping to promote and advocate for women in the workplace. So this actually, you know, aligned at the perfect time for some of the goals and initiatives that we had on our end. And I know um, all of the efforts you guys put up on your end as well to to promote women in the workplace and specifically for you in the trades. Absolutely. I think, um, first of all, women in the trades and and just working in male-dominated industries, I think it's so important to um, present to people and kind of uh, just to have conversations about it a lot more often than we do, because I don't know about you. I, I, I would like to ask you this question as well. Um, but I was very, very intimidated, very anxious and terrified to join construction. So working in the trades and working in a male dominated industry, I was the only girl on site. Um, I, I know that I felt very, you know, I didn't feel good enough. I didn't feel like I worked hard enough. I didn't feel like anyone took me seriously. So I had a really difficult time kind of getting over that hurdle and joining the construction crew. How did you get into working in a male dominated field? Yeah. So I actually, it, you know, when you kind of see it, it actually kind of went back a little bit further into my education. So my degree is in mechanical engineering and I was amazing by the way. Thank you. No, I I loved math. So that's kind of what brought me to the engineering route. That was the one subject I was really good at. (laughs) Um, Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Being in mechanical engineering and just sitting in my classes, um, kind of looking around and just seeing that um, I was one of a few females. There's a handful of us. Um, It it, it was intimidating even then. Um, But I think one of the things that that helped through that is as I, even in just getting my degree each year, I felt like I saw even more females, you know, in those classes. And it was slowly, um, you know, seeing, seeing girls in the field was, you know, starting to increase, which was great. Um, I think, you know, similar to yourself, it's very intimidating. And I think even for us, just, you know, not only being female, but being young females, trying to be able to, you know, earn the same level of respect is I would say one of the difficulties. Um, But I think what you and I are doing and, you know, what, what you guys are doing within the trades, what Eaton is doing with their efforts for advocating for women. I think people like us, you know, younger females advocating for this makes it easier for women to have that confidence to know, you know, even younger women than us to have that confidence to be able to think, Hey, I can do that too. I mean, look at what they're doing. And I I would like to, I would like to think that's accurate. Like I wish I had more women in the trades when I started, I started when I was 21. I probably a little bit older than you. We don't have to talk (laughs) about my age, (laughs) but um, it, so it was really, I I found it really difficult. And when you do find another woman who works in the industry or in any kind of under the the trades umbrella in any sort of capacity, it's so nice to see someone that you can relate to, whether it be on an age level, um, gender, anything else. It's just nice to see that because we are kind of slowly making a difference and more and more women and more and more people, youth are wanting to join into the trades. Um, I, I think a lot of that struggle is not really understanding or knowing 
what career opportunities are available in the trades. Or, you know, and, and you said yours stems a lot from school. Um, when I was in school, women in those classrooms was, was, was not really a thing. Um, in order for me to take a construction class, I had to take um, like a, a home ec class, I guess. I can't remember what it's called now. Um, like a home ec class. So I made nylon babies. I learned to cook and run a household in order to take another part in school and learn how to use a bandsaw and other equipment, um, um, which I find really interesting. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, that's almost goes back to, you know, the 50s, you know, women having to mm -hmm. do the home act type of things, cooking and, you know, moving away from, you know, if, if the trades is what you like to do, just being able to do the core curriculum for what's required for that specific, you know, degree or certification or, or what it might be. <laughs> Yeah. So you are um, quite young. You're the youngest supervisor on the floor in Eaton, correct? So I actually, so a little bit of background on kind of my journey with Eaton. Um, so I started with Eaton joining the Operations for Engineers Leadership Development Program. Mm -hmm. and so within that, um, obviously, it's an operations-based um, uh, program. So I had joined one of the larger plants that we've got in the Southeast. I was in South Carolina at the time, and I was working um, as a manufacturing engineer for that, that year's um, kind of assignment or role within the program. And mm -hmm. I was actually working for one of the few female managers that were on the floor, and which was great to be able to have her as a mentor being in a manufacturing facility. Um, so I was working on, you know, the actual steel production sides so actually putting together all of the parts to create the um uh, at that plant it was medium voltage switch gear and assembly um That's amazing. So that division of eaton so i was you know out there with with the the guys and the girls that were working on the machines to create those those steel pieces to then assemble into um the switch gear but six months, and that was my first role within the program. So first job outside of um, getting my degree. And so six months into that, an opportunity presented itself for me to actually take on becoming the supervisor in one of the warehouse areas of that plant. So, um, which was incredible. I mean, six months in, that was a great. Yeah, good for um, you. I was, I was honored to be able to get that responsibility. Um, so that, um, at the time that was, I was the youngest, um, female supervisor within that plan, which was, you know, incredible because of the challenge it, it, it brought to me, but it was also mm -hmm. very intimidating, you know, being in a plant that size, you know, being young, being a female, um, and you know, this is, I'm six months into my career. So, um, it was a lot of challenges and to be able to that. move so quickly and grow. That's uh, first of all, that, I, uh, that shows how hard you're willing to work. Um, so good for you. So you did that all within six months and that's, I would assume that's very intimidating being in a plant. I'm, I don't work in a, a plant, so I can't, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that there's quite a lot of men. Um, the male to wow. female ratio is probably a little tilted toward, toward one gender for sure. Yeah, absolutely. No, it was. And I think that's, you know, kind of what you spoke to earlier, kind of, you know, um, being able to gain the respect and just the intimidation that you feel, yeah. I feel like that was definitely one of my roles. Um, I'm now on the commercial side, so I'm no longer in that role. Um, but it was definitely one of those roles where I feel like I was you know, challenged the most into, um, you know, proving my worth um, and, you know, being able to show, hey, I'm young and I'm a female, but I can do my job, you know, just as great as any other candidate as well. Um, I love that attitude. Yeah. I mean, when you're in that environment, it, you know, you just want to succeed and it yeah. ended up being a really great opportunity. And, um, you know, that would be one of the things I felt like I had a really good mentor at the time and my manager. Um, so that would be, you know, one thing that I would recommend to anybody in, you know, manufacturing or in the trades or just anywhere where you feel um, like you're, you're the minority in that field um, or it's male dominated. 
you know, surrounding yourself by, by someone who's going to help support you and advocate for you is really important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. To have that, that mentor or someone to even talk to, because it is, I think it's a lot of pressure uh, working in a male dominated industry or working um, in any of these kinds of fields. Um, You need someone who kind of understands or someone who wants to motivate you. Someone just, like I said, to even just talk to, uh, did you find there was a lot of, did you struggle with any of that? Uh, I'm trying to find the appropriate way to say a lot of this. Um, with the men uh, uh, in the plant, did you find it was a bit of a struggle? Did people want to listen to you? Yeah. And I felt like that was almost um, like a twofold because I didn't start out in that role of authority. So at that point, you know, I, you know, was working with these people as more of, you know, I'm your friend, I'm your peer. And then I had to go into being that level of authority. Whereas before, you know, they, they didn't have to, to follow, not my orders, but follow my direction um, for what we needed to get done in the area that I was supervising. So I felt like that was definitely a struggle. Not only was I young and a female, I also didn't start with that level mm-hmm. of authority um, as my role title. Um, so I definitely thought it was difficult and, you know, I felt like I had to do, um, not some soul searching, but, you know, I had to figure out, you know, I had to understand the people that I was working with, um, understand, you know, how to best communicate with them. Not everybody is the same. Um, and I think it takes a lot, you know, on my end as well to make sure that, um, you know, I'm addressing, issues or anything like that in a timely manner and being fair to everybody, no matter age, gender, or whatnot. Um, and I think that, you know, learning those things definitely came from the help of, you know, my manager at the time. And honestly, having the support of, I think a big piece is also getting the support of your male peers. So when you're in that mm-hmm. point of authority, you know, I need to have them have my back when it comes to, you know, me, you know, making sure that the employees in the area are getting whatever it is that needs to be done. So I think having the allies, you know, on that other side of the fence, you know, our male counterparts, that's, that's a big piece as well, making sure that they're supporting us and advocating for us. Absolutely. I also, um, that's something I want to address as well. I find it as much as there are struggles on site for me personally, um, being a female and what I've gone through, I think there's people don't always address how wonderful the men on site can be and how supportive they can be. Um, I work with some great, amazing people. I remember when I started out, um, I was 21 years old on a construction site. I have only ever touched construction with my dad for fun. So we'd build little things at his house or I'd help him with renovations and to me, it was kind of fun. So I didn't really understand a lot of things that I had to, to, to do and, and figure out. Um, I remember on, on the job site, my brother had to teach me how to read a measuring tape. So I do not excel in math. Numbers are not my thing, which um, that I don't think, I don't think it's a terrible thing. I tell everyone I suck at math. I'm not great at numbers, but it just means I have to work that much harder to um, understand a lot of those things. And I don't mind that because every day, you should be working to better yourself. Um, so he taught me on a job site how to read a measuring tape. We were like hiding because I didn't want anyone to know that I didn't know how, which I don't think now looking back at it, um, it's not, you should be able to ask for a help. You should be able to tell someone that you don't know how to do it and, and be open to learning. Um, but I found it to be a very, very big struggle um, because I was surrounded by men. And I thought that they would think I'm a lesser person, that I didn't take my job seriously, that I was just a frilly girl on site. Um, And I ended up loving everyone I work with. They were all so great. They would walk me through everything. Um, And that being said, I've also experienced the the other side. Um, I was on a job site one day. And as I was leaving, I had someone yell at me, the mall's that way, girls. What are you doing here? Oh God, I don't think I've ever been so mad at work. (laughs) I was very upset about that one. Or I put out, um, I put out a poll, I think on Twitter and I asked people, why do you think um, women struggle to be in the trades a little bit more? And one of the comments was, we were afraid we'd break nails um, because women can't do math. 
just just a lot of misogynistic nonsense. Um, so I think you kind of struggle to walk the line of both ways. As, and it's really important to find those supportive um, people on site because not everyone is out to be rude or, um, or to belittle you. So it, it is a struggle, but I think it's just that much more um, satisfying at the end of the day because you overcome all this and you work as hard as you can. And look at you, six months later, you had that opportunity and, and a position of authority because you worked so hard. Yeah, no, and I, I think, you know, even on your end, putting all of the work that you did to, to prove yourself in this field and you're such an asset to the team, I mean... Um, you bring a lot to the table when it comes uh, to the homes group. So I think it's, it's disappointing to hear some of the things that, you know, unfortunately we all go through, like the things mm-hmm. that, that you've heard on your end, um, those comments, oh, it's, it's crazy. Doesn't it just enrage you? <laughs> yeah. And to me, it's like, Hey, it's 2022. Oh my goodness. But yeah, get over it. Yeah. Um, I think. These conversations are so great because it's it's bringing to light, you know, what we go through, and you know, hey, you're not alone in this. Um, and I think, you know, getting the support of you know the other side. I think to your point, yeah, the you see both ends of it. So you've got you know males that you work with who are really supportive, and um, I thought you brought up a great point. Like, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, I think one of my things that um, I'll speak to, I help with the recruiting. I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia, and I help with the recruiting in Eaton. Um, And one of my things that I always tell people, um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, And I think especially being young, um, I'm surrounded by some people who have been in this industry for 10, 15, 20 years. I'm not going to know everything that they know. It's just impossible. Mm -hmm. So to not be afraid to ask that question. I mean, I, um, when I switched from the manufacturing side from the plant and I went to a role um, on the commercial front end for Eaton, um, I was up at our electrical sector headquarters in Pittsburgh. And um, I had a lot of great, you know, male counterparts on the team. I was working for a residential product line and Anytime I had a question, you know, they, they were so eager to help me out because my success in the end is the team's success. And I think yeah. that's, that's the big part to understand is, you know, we all succeed together. We all struggle together. So let's, let's help build that success and that confidence, you know, across the board. Do you find that um, there's anything in particular it, with your career that you've had to kind of struggle through, like? For me on a construction site, um, one thing that I found really difficult is safety wear. So I had, when I first started, I had to get a custom harness because first of all, nothing was small enough. Everything was for a larger man. And they're also not there or they weren't made for a woman's body type. So your clips are in the wrong area um, and it wouldn't hold you in. I could literally fall out of my harness or I still struggle with um, gloves and my safety boots. Um, I don't have, I have petite, small feet and I have to contact brands sometimes to see if they can ship me out a boot that'll fit or go to multiple stores or only shop online to try to find a size that I can wear on a construction site. And I wear my boots until they literally fall apart because it's such a struggle sometimes to find what you need and gloves Um, it is actually unsafe to wear gloves that don't fit because you won't have a grip. You can drop a tool. Um, you could hurt someone or yourself because you just can't hold on to something properly Uh, for about mm -hmm. just over two hours. So she's bound and I can't control when she wakes up. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's my struggle in the industry. (laughs) Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I was, uh, I was a little distracted there. Um, Can you also tell me a little bit about WAVE? I've been dying to ask you about it. Yeah, so WAVE is something that Eaton has done. You know, we've got it on a global level as well as specific chapters to to countries and even local down to um, local sites and whatnot. But it's women adding value to Eaton. Um, And it was actually one of the reasons because I started my journey with Eaton as an intern Um, did an internship. And then um, through that internship, I actually saw all of the things that they were doing on the cultural side to help make it, 
you know, a place that I want to work. And I had such a great experience with my peers, with my managers. I just felt like it was, um, they created an environment to, that made my personal journey and my career path seem special and seem that, you know, what was important to me was important to them. And, and what you're doing matters and is making a difference. Yeah. And I thought that was huge. I mean, going, not everybody gets that, you know, let alone being yeah. their first, first employer. Um, and I think wave is one of the ways that they do it. I mean, they've got lots of different um, inclusion resource groups, um, but wave is the one, you know, helping to support women. So women adding value to Eaton. Um, and it's, it's one of my personal, like, I kind of started this call saying that this came around at the perfect time. Um, it's actually one of my development goals to, to help myself uh, or to get more involved and help this program by, by um, you know, doing events. They've got lots of campaigns that they run throughout the year. Um, International Women's Day is coming up. And um, instead of it just being a one day thing, they've got stuff going on all month long. Um, they've got different events, you know, the, the theme this year, um, is ally act achieve. So, um, how they, how you can be an ally, um, and taking action to help achieve women's equality in the workplace. So helping to remove those discriminations and biases. Um, that's, that's amazing. I love Eaton. I love the work you guys are putting towards, have women in the industry, women in the trades. I think WAVE is an amazing program. Um, I really want to just say that, first of all, because I think you guys are really pushing women in the industry. You're doing phenomenal. And being able to meet and speak with women like you is so helpful for me to have someone else I can relate to, for someone to talk to. And I hope for youth and women coming into uh, their careers and trying to figure out what they want to do is there any advice that you would give to um, women who want to change their career or women um, who are thinking about joining into the trade industry? Yeah, absolutely. I would say to, to not be afraid to make that jump. Um, and I had kind of said this before, but to, to ask questions and to surround yourself with the people that are going to help you in your journey and your career path. Um, you know, we don't know everything to start. So you've got to ask those questions and you you're finding a good mentor and you're going to have, you know, mentors come in and out of your career for seasons, but making sure that you've, you've always got a person that you can go to that you can relate to who can, you know, help provide specific guidance. You know, maybe they've been in your footsteps before, maybe they've done that job, but you know, they can, more specifically and directly help you get from point A and point B to, to what you want to do in your career, whether it be in the trades, whether it be in manufacturing, whether it be, you know, in engineering. Um, but you put your mind to it. Um, you know, you could do, you do anything. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And I totally agree. You know, um, like I was saying, asking for help, that's something that I still have a hard time with, but nobody knows everything. There is always going to be someone who knows more than you, has done it longer than you, um, and you can always learn from them. So I think being open to learning new things, to trying new things, because it can be very scary to go outside of your own little box and try something new, but you'll never know what you can excel at and be great at. Ask those questions, find a mentor. Um, and honestly, I think you're, you're doing so wonderful. Eaton's doing so wonderful for women in the trades. Um, and I just want to say thank you. And it's so nice to see you again and get a chance to discuss these things. Yeah. Thank you to you as well. And, you know, I, I love watching your stuff. I follow you as well as all of the other homes things mm -hmm. on all the social media. Um, and I think, you know, what you're doing and advocating for women in the trades to, to show your journey and show that, you know, this is what they want um, you know, they can do it too. I think it's incredible. And I thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. It was so great to, to speak with you again and to be able to talk about this. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's great that we can just have a conversation, um, regarding this. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully we'll see each other again soon. Yeah. IBS so. next year. Yeah. 2023. <laughs> I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> Probably with kids in tow, but I will be there. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Well, I hope all goes well. And I hope your baby is well rested, waking up from her nap. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. I'm going to go grab her now. Um, have a wonderful day and I'm sure we'll talk soon.
Yeah, you as well. Thanks. Bye.